वेलकम विल स्टार्ट विद द नाइन्थ चैप्टर ऑफ एन सी आर टी क्लास इलेवन जोग्राफी इन दिस चैप्टर विल टॉक अबाउट द सोलर रेडिएशन इंसुलेशन हीट बजट एंड टेम्परेचर नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट विद अ वेरी सिंपल कॉन्सेप्ट लेट्स से आई हैव द एनर्जी कमिंग इन फ्रॉम द सन एंड दिस इज माई अर्थ नाउ इफ द एनर्जी कीप्स ऑन कमिंग वॉट वुड हैपन दिस सन दिस अर्थ वुड बॉइल लाइक or would basically blast off considering it could to be a hot ball of fire now what is important is this actually does not happen so what happens is if there is heat coming in from the sun in some form it is dissipated out so we would be understanding today this process in which the heat comes in and the amount of heat that goes out so first of all when i say the heat is coming up so let's say i have the earth here now the heat is coming in this heat is not uniform across the earth now this differences in the heat is governed by differences in the pressure and this differences in the pressure causes the transfer of heat from one place to another so we have the movement of the air that takes place as we say from high pressure to low pressure the winds move from high pressure to low pressure we would understand that further in the next chapter so the idea here is basically due to difference in the level of heating you have different pressure zones and because of these pressure zones you have transfer of heat and energy that actually takes place the next important thing that we try to understand today is insulation the name itself makes the things very clear in plus solation so in means incoming solution means solar energy so all the form of incoming solar energy are studied under insulation this insulation is maximum in the tropics minimum on the poles so let's say you have the direct sun rays falling here so you would have smaller area which would be heated more however what it what would happen on the poles is the Uh, the lines would be slanting and it would cover larger area since it would cover larger area what would happen is the heating would be much more less as compared to the trop uh, the tropical level therefore we say few important things about the insulation first of all as we said tropics get more insulation as compared to polar areas the next is equator has less insulation as compared to tropics then you have maximum insulation in the subtropical desert area and that's because the amount of clouds in the sky is minimum so that you have maximum sun rays or maximum insulation that actually comes on to the earth the next is across the same latitude the insulation is always higher over the land mass as compared to the sea mass that's because land gets heated quickly and therefore the amount of insulation that is being absorbed by the land is always higher as compared to sea so these are some of the primary things that we need to understand the next thing is you have the sun here and around the sun you have the earth that revolves now at some point the the earth would be close to the sun at other points the earth would be far off from the sun the point where earth is closest to the sun is known as perihelion however helion words helion means sun and the place where it's farthest the point where it's farthest it is known as aphelion so the good way to remember is p for past so it means close so therefore perihelion is the closest point to the sun however aphelion is the farthest point so when the earth is in its perihelion the amount of insulation would be higher now on what parameters does the insulation depend first of all the rotation of the earth so as we said uh, the earth rotates on a kind of 66 and a half degree to the plane of the orbit and it would basically govern the amount of insulation that's coming in the next is the angle of inclination that we already talked about if the rays are falling straight or they are slanting if they are slanting they would cover more area and therefore the insulation would be distributed the next is the length of the day if the days are longer more amount of sunlight would be coming in and therefore you would receive more insulation if the atmosphere is transparent there are no clouds you would have lot of insulation as we talked about in the case of subtropical desert areas 
so there the cloudiness is least and as a result what happens is you have higher amount of insulation that comes in so transparency of the atmosphere is again very very important to uh, i would say an important factor to understand the amount of insulation and finally is the land to sea ratio so if the land is more the amount of insulation is more we'll see in a while how isotherms vary in the north hemisphere and the south hemisphere so that would be towards the end of this lecture the next important thing is in the sky you can see some kind of suspended particles now what does these suspended particles cause these suspended particles lead to scattering and because of the scattering we say we see the sky as blue in color we see the rising sun and the setting sun as red in color so those are some of the important points that we need to discuss here a very important and conceptual topic that we'll now touch is the heating and cooling of the atmosphere Before before we begin with i have four simple terms and a simple demonstration here so let's say i am here and i have the students out here now let's understand the conduction first so you have students in three rows the last student has to give the book to me so how many ways it could be possible that student would transfer it to the student in front of him to the next student and finally the book reaches me so that's what is conduction so with every let's say you have a rod it is very hot here and it's very cold here so slowly and gradually the rod would come on to a kind of neutral temperature and the hotness here would decrease and the coldness here would decrease and it would be a kind of temperature that would be regulated between the two so that's what is conduction the next is convection so the last student since he has to transfer the book to me he'll get up come to me and give me the book so that is how we understand convection so simple terms you have a boiler and you have the water boiling in so the the water that's very close to the burner would get very hot the hot particles tend to move up and the cold particles tend to come down and that's how the process of convection occurs in the atmosphere as well the next is radiation the boy can simply throw it to me as does the sun so sun simply throws the light onto us and that's what is radiation so three common concepts clear here the next concept very very important listen to it carefully the next concept is advection under advection what happens is there is horizontal transfer of energy it's not a vertical transfer we also talk about vertical advection but let's keep it aside for a while we are focusing on the horizontal transfer of uh, energy so when we are to, uh, tra talking about horizontal transfer of heat it's accentuated or caused by wind or currents so it requires some external trigger for the same and therefore we have advection a good example of advection could be loo that's the local wind in india so that's a good example to understand the process of advection so these are the ways through which we can say the heating and the cooling of the atmosphere actually takes place now we talk about the sun rays so when you have the sun rays coming in these sun rays are actually in the form of sorry they are actually in the form of short rays so short waves come in and ultimately long waves go out the difference of this energy is being trapped and that is known as the terrestrial radiation which we will understand in a while as the heat budget so when we talk about heat budget it's as simple as that we have the amount that is reflected the, uh, the amount that is reflected is equated to the amount that is being absorbed by the earth so you have the sun rays coming in you have 34% of it and 17% of it that is being absorbed by the earth 14% of it that's being absorbed by the atmosphere in all we can say we have 64 65% that is being absorbed by the atmosphere of this 64 65% that is being absorbed by the atmosphere it's radiated back 17 radiated to the space from the earth and nearly 48 radiated to the space from the atmosphere now this is further sub classified as the absorbed uh, amount that we received that was 34 could be further divided as 6 9 and 19 so it's radiation from the sun 
the turbulence and the conduction so what we do is basically we maintain a 65 balance so 65 that's being absorbed and the 65 that's being reflected so that's the key idea to understand here and therefore we call it a heat budget now this heat budget varies with latitude very obvious the region of the tropics would have a surplus energy however there is no direct sunlight on the polar area so you have deficient sunlight and so you have a deficiency here and you have a surplus here so this surplus would fill up this deficiency and therefore there would be redistribution of the heat that actually fall onto the earth and this redistribution takes place through the various processes of atmospheric heating and cooling that we talked about, the various four processes, the conduction, convection, radiation and advection. So those are the processes through which we understand basically how the actual heating and the cooling takes place. The ne next is temperature. Now what are the parameters that actually affect the temperature of a place? Definitely latitude is one of the parameters. The equatorial region would have higher temperature as compared to a polar area. Then again altitude as you go up you have uh, lesser temperature as compared to the ground levels. So with height the temperature decreases. With altitude, rising altitude you have the temperature that decreases. If the region is very distant from the sea and it's a kind of core interior landmass that's seen. This region would have a higher temperature in contrast to the regions which are close to the sea or in the proximity of the sea where the land breeze, sea breeze would be much more active. So here you would have moderate temperature, here you would have extremes of temperature. The next factor that affects it is the air mass and the pressure of the warm and the cold currents that are present and finally the, uh, the local aspects we can say. So the local physiography, the local winds like Fino, uh, the Chinook wind, the Fawn wind that we would be discussing further in the next chapter. So those are the factors that basically influence or are influenced by the temperature. Now when we talk about distribution of temperature, the first thing is the lines that join the places of equal temperature are known as isotherms similar to isobars which join the lines of equal pressure conditions. Now very important thing, the isotherms are basically parallel to the latitude but I have two maps here, the world map for January distribution and world map for the July distribution. As you can see in the north hemisphere the bends are less pronounced in the month of July but in the months of January the bends are more pronounced. Similarly, if we compare South Hemisphere and North Hemisphere, since South Hemisphere has a lesser land mass, the lines are much more parallel without less uh, or there are lesser bends we can say. However, in the North Hemisphere, we can say more number of bends are present. So, the, uh, the variations basically in the heat are much more pronounced in the North Hemisphere. The basic reason attributed to this is the concept of continentality or the presence of the land mass in the North Hemisphere. So those are some of the things that we discuss here. Now with this we cover the ninth chapter of NCRT class 11. We will be covering further chapters in the upcoming classes. Stay tuned, do subscribe, have a great day.